Morning. So today we are farm meets house build. Most people would normally pour a concrete slab like we poured yesterday here and then with little bits of concrete that was left over they would do a few bits of potholes or this that and the other or bits of drainage or whatever else they've got going on the site. We had to work that the other way around because basically for the house build we got some sumps and some chambers that needed concreting in so we needed a small amount of concrete but I thought well I'm not going to pay for X amount of empty meters on the wagon so we quickly got this slab um, pulled out here, levelled it all off, trimmed it through and then basically we poured this slab and ordered enough over to do what we needed to do up on the house build. Our farm is a little bit like a mechanic's own car. It runs really well but there is a mountain of unfinished jobs and things that need doing. Little bits of concrete in like this, we've got another slab to go in there and then ultimately we've got one pull to pull through to connect the existing yard over there through to this yard because at the moment it's just hardcore and has been for the last two years but mainly we haven't done that because of money now i don't know whether anybody can explain this but why throughout covid throughout the war throughout all these bits and bobs concrete has continued to go sky high and it remains sky high everything else has pretty much settled off leveled off and come down except for concrete so why has concrete stayed so expensive now I know one reason is obviously that idiot train that's going to save you 12.7 seconds from Manchester to London, but I still don't understand why concrete hasn't come back down. So if anybody can answer me that question, drop a comment in the box. But basically yesterday we poured this slab in, so we've got a 150 slab here, so this finishes off this area of the yard outside the front of the building. We've gone for a brush finish, we've full nose troweled the edges, so that's all done nicely and then that's ready now to go off that way and go off that way as and when we need more concrete. So we'll probably do the same again, as and when we need concrete for further stuff around the house, we'll try and put these other slabs in at the same time. So I'll show you a bit of yesterday. Then poured this yesterday. Uh, Chris has been across this morning and cut me the expansion joints in, so they're all in and done. And basically, what we've got then is this is the little bit here. We've got to connect the existing slab in front of the pig sheds behind you, all the way down to that far shed over there. That's the final pull of concrete that we've got to do through here. Now, either side here, we've got two ponds. So this is the existing pond that was on site when we first bought the place. So that's a natural pond. And then when we built everything that we've got here, we had to put an attenuation pond in to let the water drain off the existing yards through the drainage channels all the way into this. And this works in such a way that basically the outlet pipe is restricted so that if we get a flash down pour, all that water comes rushing into this pond, the, the water level rockets and goes up to the top. 
and then basically it releases it at the same rate as what it would ordinarily had that been permeable ground into the existing pond which is then through the ditch into the swale and away it goes. So we don't want to lose the, well we can't lose either pond but we certainly don't want to lose the natural pond because that's become quite a nice habitat for all forms of wildlife. So we've got ducks and we've got pheasants and we've got all the creepy crawlies and everything that's here on site. But this sort of area that we've got here is quite a main route through for getting straw for the pig shed. We've got the calves down here, we're gonna have some more cattle down here afterwards. So it's quite a busy route. So we've got to pull this through last, but I want to make sure that it's nice and tidy and either side what I want is some handrails. So what we've done, any job that we've got panels, as in concrete panels from work that we've had refused, or we've refused, I've got a bit of an array of some oddball panels there, so I'm going to put some concrete panel walls around here in almost like a 50 pence piece shape, so that we've got the two splays either side onto both yards, and then we can retain the ground, concrete up to, and put a nice fence up. We still keep the wildlife element of the pond, both ponds serve their purposes, and it just finishes it off all nicely. So that's the plans over there. Um, we've got pigs going at the minute. We've only got 400 left on site, or 380 left on site, which are going next week. So I think this shed is pretty much empty now. So Mark started with the big clean down. So he's getting all the organic matter out like we showed you in the last time. Um, and then that can start to be pressure washed. And then we've got another new addition. So basically our tractors that we've had on site, we've always had John Deere. Um, my personal preference is John Deere. I like them. I think they're a belting good bit of kit. The 6145R, which is what we've had in the past, so there was that one and the one with the skinny tyres on. They've both been belting good tractors and we can't fault them. However, at the moment, I can't look away from the difference in price between green and blue. So basically what I did is I weighed up all the options, I weighed up what we've got. Now our dealer, which is Ray Valley Tractors, they were originally John Deere dealers and they've moved across to New Holland. Um, now the deals that were on, basically with the New Holland, I just couldn't look away from. We got prices from two other firms on the John Deere, um, but ultimately <coughs> it come in best part of 20 something thousand pounds less for arguably a bigger tractor. We'll do a separate video on this actually, but in a nutshell, 6145R is a 144, 145 horsepower tractor that boosts. The T7210 that we've got is a 180 horsepower tractor that boosts. So ultimately, it's the same size footprint of tractor, but it's got more poke. Um, so we'll bring a separate video on that though. We're gonna have a look at the top. Separate little side note while we're walking up the top. We put a, obviously these are the landscaping buns that we put in place and we put a run of conifers on the top. Now this is like a bit of an American idea of screening and the wax on the leaf effectively of the conifer is supposed to take the dust elements away and help screen any odour. So given that sometimes the weather comes this way and my house is over there and there are other houses further on down the road over there. We planted some conifers um, pretty much when we set the site up to try and stop some of that. Now these basically were only that big when we planted them. You see they've come on very well now. So the more they grow up, hopefully the more of the dust particles the wax will retain as the wind blows through and it'll help stop some of the odour. Okay, so what we had here originally, um, so there's a ditch that runs down the side of the site in the middle of the hedgerow. So here, it went to pipes from here to the back of the building. So ultimately, when we put them other buildings up, we piped that ditch, we backfilled it, and all this ditch drained, and then we left like a big massive gravel trap here to stop any sediment going into the pipe, goes through the pipe, comes out the far end and follows the original course round ultimately to the pond that we just mentioned. So what we've done here, we needed to connect everything that surface water-wise that's got to go through. So ultimately, this here is like a big sediment trap now that we've got. So we've got the ditch which is piped into it. We've then got that taken away. We've got a big sump in the bottom which is going to catch any sediment so it doesn't go through. And then ultimately we've got all the surface water and the downpipe water from around the house. 
which is coming through. And then also on top of that, we've got a couple of land drains here and we've got the overflow from the poo tank. Now, poo tank has been moved, that's now in here. So we've got a pump connected to that that's basically aer aer aerated. It blows bubbles and the bubbles basically make all the, the sediment and everything that's in the tank rot and what water blows off the top is supposed to be able to drink. I'm not going to try that, but that blow off water goes through the natural water course and that tank, like um, an old fashioned septic tank would need emptying all the time this we've only emptied once since we've moved in so that's over five years we've only emptied that once so that's all connected up now and in everything's connected back up through to the next chamber so what we did here we obviously dug the hole out we, we dug the gravel trap out uh, we put the two concrete rings in we've concreted the base of that the minute that's filled up with water so we'll pump that out when we come to fill that up with concrete um, but basically the base of that is concreted in now and um, we've got the other one up here. So then what we've done basically, this one we'd already cast the concrete round the very base to create that sump and hold the rings in terms of height. This is two 1200 rings tall. And what we've got here, we've got all the surface water drainage, everything coming into it. And then ultimately this will have this sort of a grid top on when all the tarmac is done. So this will be catching all your surface water. Um, off effectively the drive and the turning area and again it's a sediment trap so we can catch all of that sediment before we let it all run through them drains and get stuck in the bottom of the pipes so we've concreted that up now so both rings are captured what we'll do once we finish doing the bits and bobs around here and we know there's nothing else left to go into it we'll finish concreting up to the top so we've got effectively two concrete rings and then we've got this on top which is called a biscuit and then on top of the biscuit what we'll do is we I think we put a one layer of brick round, we sit this manhole cover on the top of them bricks and that should be perfect, the height, for where the tarmac drops down to. So basically that's it for today. We've got a mountain more to show you on the house and the landscaping and bits that we've had going on around the outside, but we'll bring you that in another video. So if you like what you've seen, hit subscribe, ring the bell and we'll leave you with a teeny tiny house build on the farm, doing some concreting and Wayne not pulling his weight montage. Cool.